Hi gang, welcome back to another Corona Geek. I'm your host, Charles McKeever, and I'm joined today by Eric Dick and Phil Laird of Tap for Tap. Hey guys, how's it going? Very well, Charles. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent, man. I'm doing excellent. I'm excited to talk about today's topic. So for, uh, for, for those of you who don't know, Corona SDKs now supports plugins, and Tap for Tap is one of our featured partners for app promotion and monetization. So Eric, if you would, tell us about Tap for Tap, what it is, and how it works. Sure, Will. Yeah, thanks Thanks again for having us here. Uh, it's been great kind of developing a, a friendship and a, and a partnership now with, uh, with you guys over at Corona, and uh, we're really excited about it. So Tap for Tap is a cross-promotion and monetization network for mobile apps. We started it uh, about a year and a half ago, basically with the idea that we wanted to provide app developers a really uh, low-cost and highly efficient way to promote their application. So we built out a Tap Exchange, essentially, uh, where developers could install our SDK, begin showing ads for other applications, any tap that occurred on an ad inside your app will earn you a tap credit, which you can then use to promote your own application elsewhere on the network. This was the very simple principle that we began things with, um, and we've basically been building on that premise um, ever since. Uh, the, the big addition for us is the fact that we added a monetization layer to our tap exchange now. So now we function as uh, a sort of barter economy as well as a sort of regular economy. We've got, a, we've got the barter side of things, we've got the tap exchange, and then we have um, the revenue generating side of things. So with Tap for Tap, you can choose whether you want to show ads to gain new users or whether you want to show ads to make money. Uh, and this is what we we have a what, what's called the earning preference slider, which allows developers to choose on a sliding scale whether they want to show ads and earn tap credits or whether they want to show ads and earn a revenue share. And sort of it's this simple approach to things uh, to scaling people's app business that's really resonated with a lot of developers. Okay, and as as of June what twenty thirteen, how many uh, d how many developers are using Tap for Tap? We have a uh, right now we have about forty five hundred with the SDK in, and over eight thousand signed up who were sort of in a perpetual courting process with trying trying to get that SDK in there. But uh, about forty five hundred uh, developers on the service now, and we've already seen a really nice influx of uh, of Corona developers coming in. Really nice high quality apps. It's been really really good to see. Very good, very good. So, so what exactly is the Tap Exchange? I mean, it, it kind of sounds obvious, but explain it if you would. It's basically that, yeah. You, you. Um, it's funny. We actually started as an impression exchange, uh, just as because it was the easiest way to get into things at the time. Uh, it made it only made sense that we'd evolve to a Tap Exchange, considering it's our name, Tap for Tap, of course. Uh, but the, the idea was that that a tap means that someone is interested in your app. They're interested in that in that little ad that they see. Um, and so if you're giving another app developer uh, an opportunity to, to, to have their uh, app engaged, then you deserve the same thing back. So that's essentially it. You show these ads. If one of your users taps one of those ads, that means that a user on someone else's app, is gonna, we're going to find a way for them to tap an ad about your app so that it's, you're truly uh, swapping engagement with your application back and forth among our 4,500 developers. It, it breaks down a little bit less than that, obviously, because we're, we're about 50-50 Android iOS right now. Okay. So, so your, your pool is a, is a little bit smaller. But, uh, but, that, but that's essentially, you're, you're going to be sharing uh, in engagement and taps with thousands of other developers on, on your given platform. OK. And, and how does the paid promotion piece work? So paid promotion is uh, it's a flip side to um, the monetization network. So instead of so say you so say you wanted to use this more like a traditional ad network, you weren't maybe as interested in the tap exchange side of things. In that case, you could just slide your slider all the way over to get to make money, and then you'd start earning money for every ad, uh, every install that you were able to, able to generate. You could then invest that money, or just invest money that you put into the system in buying traffic for your app. Um, and you can buy traffic on a CPC basis uh, to start. Uh, you can do a CPM as well. Uh, so that's cost per thousand impressions or cost per click or cost per tap, which is not a, an actual term, but cost per click. Uh, and then if it converts well and we're finding a good niche for you within our system, we can roll you over to what's called a CPI or a cost per install. So paid promotion is essentially just you buying media for your app. Uh, and because we're... Uh, uh, you know, on the uh, the fresher side of things, and coming out here, our CPIs are actually pretty low. Uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, you're able to sort of bid the minimum even uh, on on some traffic, uh, which is around forty cents globally. 
and and still drive. Right now, you know, hundreds, you know, hundreds of installs a day, basically. Okay. And so you talked about monetization. So how do developers monetize their apps then on in that same using that same system? It's again instead of so instead of showing ads that are uh, for the tap exchange, you slide it over all the way to to make money, and then you're just going to show ads for our network of partners. And so, uh, and some of those partners are going to be paid promotion developers who are actually buying traffic, to, uh, and so they'll be recycled into into your app. Other partners are direct relationships with the King.coms. You know, we got a lot of can everyone's loving Candy Crush these days, and and so we're we're promoting them. We've got uh, some Scopely offers in there. We've got Kabam, all these big advertisers who are paying, who have big CPI programs set up, we make deals with them, and then we sell them your traffic, and then we do a, a revenue share with the developer, with any any installs that are generated. Most of the deals that we have on the monetization side are CPI deals. We have the occasional CPC and CPM deal as well, and you you will be paid as a as a publisher uh, for whatever money comes in. You'll earn a, a hefty revenue share from from whatever comes in. Okay. And and can developers run in-house promotions? How does that work? Yeah, the the other uh, element of what we do is called self-promotion, and this is something that we had a, a huge developer request for, which is developers who have more than one app, they can then select. So your first selection is whether you want to show ads for get users or make money for the tap exchange or for the monetization uh, network, and then after that you choose how much of the traffic you, that you're you that you, you want to go towards promoting your own application. So if you've got a a network of maybe even closely themed applications, or maybe not even closely themed applications, you can recycle your users through your different applications. Uh, so say you've got an, a, a, an established application uh, with a lot of users, and you're launching a new one. You can start showing ads uh, for your new one and your old one, and, and bring your users over to your new one, where you might have a better monetization policy or anything like that. And there's no uh, there's no commission at all. There's no uh, you know there, that's just a straight exchange directly across when you're when you're promoting with yourself. On the top exchange, we do take 20% of the impressions uh, to be upfront. That's our margin on the top exchanges. We actually take 20% of those impressions and we monetize them, and that's how we keep brilliant people like Phil employed. <laughs> so, so essentially, then out of out of all the ad displays, what you're saying there is that 20% of those will be your ads in some form or fashion, and, and then the rest are on the top exchange. On the top, on, on the, the top exchange. exchange, there is that ad split that goes on where we take 20%. On the revenue side of things, we have a rev share uh, that's that's right around those lines. Also, it's it's sort of in flux when we're try when we're really trying to. Um, it, it's definitely it's never higher than that the rev share basically, but sometimes we go lower than that when we're trying to reel in uh, big apps, and it's it's discussable too. So feel free to reach out to Eric at Tap for Tap. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, that makes sense because usually in, in those CPM or, you know, uh, more in the web side of things, you know, usually you have an, a, an account manager that you can talk with and, and negotiate terms and stuff like that. So that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Okay. So let's talk about the, the Tap for Tap plugin for Corona SDK. So, sure. so I'm, I'm assuming, Phil, you, you'd be able to talk about that quite a bit, right? Yeah, I wrote it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so tell us, how does the plugin work? What do, what do developers need to know to get started with it? Uh, so it's with the new Chrono plugin system. Uh, it's basically a standard Chrono plugin, so you can uh, add it in your build.settings file, just like any other plugin if you've used them before. So that's about all you got to do. It's really simple. And uh, okay. Well. Well, what what configuration files and stuff like that? What do you, I mean? You just you're just talking about what just some settings in the in the config file? Yeah, there's just some few. There's a you just require something inside the config file. I can't remember offhand, but okay. it's in the documentation and I wrote it down there. So yeah. we've heard a lot of people say a lot of people have been praising the Corona plugin system just yeah. to say how easy it is to get up and running and you know a little under 20 minutes or so. In a, in a lot of these cases, people are are, are testing out these plugins with no problem. Well, that, that, that's great to hear. That's great to hear. Yeah, you guys have done a great job as well. I'm looking at the, the documentation here, uh, and I see, yeah, there's uh, in the, the config file, there's basically uh, you go in and there's like one one or two lines of, of settings, and then you require the, yep. uh, the library in, or the plugin in your app, and you're, you're ready to go. So so, so tell us about what... what uh, what things can you do with it here? Because I'm seeing some, uh, I'm seeing quite a bit of things that you can do with it. Yeah, so you can uh, show banners naturally, and you can stick them wherever you want on the screen. So I recently just added some new features in there that, that a couple developers requested. So you can 
little more control over where you can place the banners and uh, callbacks for all the banners so you know when, when a new one's shown up and, or when something bad happened and one failed to show up or when a user taps on it. So if you want to do anything on those events, they're, they're there for you to use. And then uh, you can show two other ad types, the, our app wall and our interstitial, and those all come with lots of callbacks for you to figure out what's going on and what the user is doing with the ads so you can have custom events depending on what you want to do inside your app. Okay. Um, we also provide the ability to set some metadata, so like gender and uh, location and things like that. So, yeah, I did. Bit. I did see in the documentation there's uh, you can uh, there's, there's the year of birth, uh, the set gender that, that sort of thing. So, so give us an example of how that might be used. So, uh, when your app requests an ad on the back end, we have a real time matching system. So. That's going to try and figure out the best current offer there to give you to try and maximize your tap through rate or revenue, depending on if you're using a tap exchange or monetization. Uh, and the more information we have, the uh, the easier it is for us to get you uh, the right match. So that helps us out a lot on the back end. It yeah. helps advertisers as well. So we have certain advertisers that are willing to pay more for traffic that they know more about. Uh, so the more information you can provide, the easier it becomes for us to sell that traffic. To uh, to willing participants, we're we're working long term on a on an RTB network essentially, where we'll be able to you know offer up an impression to a host of advertisers with all the data that we have available, um, and then they'll be able to bid on that impression. So if they know that it's a, a housewife in Tallahassee who loves candy, then, <laughs> then that Candy Crush advertiser will just know that. That they need this diabetic woman right away. <laughs> That's kind of uh, uh, the, the Facebook model in, in a sense, isn't it? I mean, the, having all the demographics about someone and then being able to match that ad very closely to that that audience, uh, as opposed to just sort of blanketing the uh, the the whole sphere and trying to hope that you get the right person. So spray and pray. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like this would definitely be something that would increase uh, tap conversions and stuff like that. We want to make sure we spend your traffic as, as best as possible, so we're not wasting anything. So. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So, what's what platforms are supported as part of this? So iOS and uh, Android, specifically the the Google Play Store. Okay, Google Play specifically. Okay, that's good to yeah. know. And is yeah. there? Uh, I see there's some sample code here. So is there? There's the project there that people can play with if they want to go and do that. Yeah, it should use all the APIs in there. So there should be an example of using them all. All right, so where should developers go to sign up? Uh, well, super simple. The easiest I'd say is just go to tapfortap.com and, uh, and sign up there, and we'll, we'll flag you as a, as a Corona developer. Or just check out the documentation on the Corona Labs website for Tap for Tap, and there's, there's a link there for Corona developers to sign up as well. Well, excellent, guys. Thanks for uh, sharing some time with us. I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be a great thing for developers. I'm looking forward to it. Us too. Thanks, thanks again, Charles, and uh, look forward to seeing what you guys can do out there, Corona developers. Sweet. Thanks a lot. Sweet.